Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Rudd, Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2005 historical drama thriller titled Munich. Now Munich runs for 2 hours and 45 minutes long. It is directed by Steven Spielberg. It is produced by Steven Spielberg, Kathleen Kennedy, Barry Mendel, and Colin Wilson. The script was done by Tony Kushner and Eric Roth, and it is based on the story Vengeance by George Jonas. The score was done by John Williams. The editing was done by Janis Kaminsky, and it was edited by Michael Kahn. And the stars of the movie are Eric Bana, Daniel Craig, Charon Hines, Matthew Kasovitz, Hans Zischler, Jeffrey Rush, Matthew Amalric, Michael Lonsdale, Lynn Cohen, and Ayala Zurer. So the story goes a little something like this. Munich uh, is set at the 1972 Olympics emanating from Munich, Germany. Palestinian terrorists close in on the Olympic village, targeting at Israeli athletes, making them hostage, while a massive shootout at the airport leaves several terrorists dead and all the athletes who only wanted to compete against others thriving to capture some medals, just like every other country and every other nation only to be left out with lives lost and hearts broken. Stunned by such tragic events, Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir, played by Lynn Cohen, sends Mossad agent Avner Kaufman, played by Eric Bana, who is loosely based off of the real character Yoval Aviv, under the supervision of case officer Ephraim, played by Jeffrey Rush, to take down the 11 remaining Palestinians who were involved in the chaos. And this almost felt a little bit much like a bit of a time travel thing. Very, very similar to a James Bond movie, where you have to take down, go to different parts of the world, where 11 Palestinians are living their lives in different parts of the world, so there's various localities as to where this movie takes place. It's not just taking place in one area, it's taking place in different parts of the world. Europe, it, Asia, United States, they're in different parts of the world, and... So, Prime Minister Mir, she is sending them off on this kind of, I guess that you would call, an eye for an eye type of revenge. While trying to do everything to restore peace. So, Avner is... Accompanied by a South African driver named Steve, played by Daniel Craig. A Belgian toy maker turned bomb expert named Robert, played by Mathieu Kasovitz. An Israeli soldier and a cleaner who goes by the name of Carl, played by Charon Heinz. And a Danish forger named Hans, played by Hans Zischler. Together, they meet with a secretive French informant named Louis, played by Mathieu Amalric. And this, during this whole process, Avner puts the mission in question, while at the same time he's abandoning his pregnant wife, played by um, Ayelet Zurer whose name is Daphna Kaufman. And he is questioning as to whether he'll survive and hopefully he'll be left alone to never assassinate ever again. 
and to just live a legit life with his wife and daughter. Or he puts it in question as to, is this eye for an eye revenge ever going to end? Or is it just going to just continue on and on till my sanity gets the better of me? That's kind of like what's his frame of mind during this initiative. Which could be a matter of life and death and how long this will go on. No question about it, Munich will have you pondering. But the focus at times definitely falls off kilter with its ridiculous continuity error. And one of the main continuity errors, there's plenty of them in this movie, but the main one that really, really irked me the most was when the poor soul was falling dead on his chest by being annihilated while his, while he falls flat on the ground with his bag of groceries in the lift lofty in the lift lobby of his apartment domain, it was, in fact, oh, it was such a wonderful scene. It needed to be shown once again, and then I ask myself, why? It was kind of distracting me for a while until some scenes when publicly orchestrated discussions from various alliances are situated in cafes, bookstores, the streets, you name it. They're omnipresent. But what's odd about this whole discussions and plans to take down these Palestinians is that they're supposed to be a secretive operation but yet they're out in the public spectrum where passers-by can see and hear everything they're talking about they're not out in some I mean when you're in a when you're in a public place you're not supposed to blab out your secrets otherwise everything every otherwise it'll catch on and retribution will be in store. It doesn't matter whether you're Mossad or Palestinian. If word catches on, it'll be leaked. Never mind the fact that is this movie was set in 1972 and not 2005, where of course if you open your mouth, you're practically almost buried to the ground. Because everybody rats on on people in, in this day and age. But back even back in 1972, if word catches on, you know, there is still chances of retribution. And they're supposed to be a secret operative group. And yet they're blabbing out their, their plans and their strategies of vengeance. This is what I mean by off-kilter direction and editing. It really questions the focus of the people behind the camera. Although we're ahead of time that the film was based on actual events, but it's complex to determine which events are real and which stuff are for dramatization. Even though the book by George Jonas was a fictitious account, from what I've gathered, it still, you know, puts this whole true events thing still in question. Unless you live the moment, we never know the whole story. And I should not be just sitting here chomping away at continuity errors or awkward shoot or awkward shots I should put emphasis on the more logical measures the Israelis should have done to the Palestinians besides the eye for an eye revenge what could have been more logical would have had the Israelis capture the terrorists and exploit them on live television in front of millions of people 
for the scumbags they really are. Because let's face it, even Avner knows that like the Greek mythological creature, the Hydra, if you burn off one of his necks, a new one will grow back on. Just the same as for terrorism. You kill one terrorist person, another one will spring out of the woodworks and will just take his or her place. So, is there really a point behind all these eye-for-an-eye eye revenge killings? Not really. And it doesn't go better from here. It gets worse. Because maybe the person who's been promoted might come up with a much more clever or resourceful strategy so that their opponents could get their comeuppance. Eye for an eye revenge never stops. It just, it's like the Energizer Bunny. It keeps going and going and going. Till it gets, it gets into you. It's a shame, really. The whole concept of espionage is definitely met with welcomed interest, especially the scenes by members of the Mossad, led by the well-cultivated Louis, played by the always very talented Matthew Amalric, the only person who holds the key to the whereabouts of the Palestinians behind the carnage. I also got to give the special kudos out to Michael Lonsdale, who was superb in his performance as Louis Papa, who further elucidates the divergences that penetrate in this environment where their lives are always by the numbers. It's always about the numbers game here, folks. And... You do sometimes are put to question, is all of this worth it? The main star of this film is Mossad agent Avner, played by Eric Bana, and I have a bit of curiosity when it comes to casting. As good as they are, why was it that Steven Spielberg decided to cast Australian performers like Eric Bana as Avner and Jeffrey Rush as case officer Ephraim. With the cultural intensity as heavy as this, it's mandatory for specific cultural casting. These guys are Australian. And they didn't really strike me very much for looking Israeli at all. I mean, maybe you could argue that Eric Bana, although born in Australia, is actually really of Croatian extraction, because his real name is... Banalrovic, I think that's Eric Bana's real name. He just shortened it. And I'm not knocking out Eric Bana or Jeffrey Rush for that matter. They were really good in their respective roles. You know, providing the intensity and the voice of reason behind this whole plot in this movie. They do carry that out very well. But it's just that I think for a movie to work in this magnitude... We truly need to have somebody who is or who has played Israeli Mossad's to make the cast all the more authentic. It just loses authenticity to cast somebody of a different culture 
to play the respective roles. As good as they were. I'm not putting Eric Bana or Jeffrey Rush down in any way, shape, or form. It just cure. It's just a curious. It's just a curious thing I have when it came to the casting. That's really all that. That doesn't irk me, but it just makes me. Puzzled. My assumption, my guess, kind of led me to believe that Aussies are just easy to cast. And because of the fact that they speak fluent English and can adapt to any accent thrown at them. For better casting, I would have, I would have gotten Israeli actor... Lior Ashkenazi to play a Mossad agent, just like he did in Ethan Fox's brilliant film, Walk on Water. If you've never seen that film, that film is amazing. It's enigmatic to pinpoint which parts of the movie are factual and which parts are our fantasy. I mean, the whole globe-hopping thing sounds more James Bond than anything else. Without the gadgets. The editing is also highly questionable. I don't think vengeful killings will resolve any peace within Palestine and Israel. And even though this movie will keep you intrigued, it still went on for too long. There could have been a lot of scenes edited out. I think 2 hours and 45 minutes was too long for this movie. Maybe 2 hours at the most. We don't need to go through all kinds of other small scenes here and there. They could have sometimes did some editing out. Not everybody needs their fun in the sun. A lot of that lengthy time's energy sparks tons of awkward moments. If you want to see a great film based on this interesting event, I would suggest a wonderful Kevin McDonald Oscar winning documentary from 2000, One Day in September. The stories there are accurate, and the interview with the lone surviving Palestinian was very provocative. If you've never seen that one before, I suggest you tune that in if you want a more accurate picture of what happened in Black September. So although this movie is good... I'm not knocking it out. It has its moments. It's in, it keeps you intense. It keeps you questioning the whole way through. But I think a lot of editing was very awkwardly shot. The camera angles have are also put in question. The length is pretty is way too long. There could have been some scenes that could have been easily cut. The performances were really good. <coughs> but I don't think it was one of Steven Spielberg's best work. It's not his worst, but it's not one of his best. It's just mediocre at best. So if I was to give this score out of 10, I will have to give Munich a 6.5. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember, be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude remarks.
and I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Rutwriter saying, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.